Welcome back. Nigeria's Purchasing Managers Index edged up slightly from 48.2 reading posted in May to 50.2 in June. The latest report released today by FBN Quest shows an improvement in two of the principal sub-indices, workforce and new orders. The report says the uptake in the indices were driven by respondents' increase in domestic input utilization as some companies have been able to boost their processing of local raw materials owing to the challenges of sourcing FX for imports of raw materials and intermediates. The employment sub-index reading increased from 40.5 to 48, while new orders climbed to 52.5 from 49.5 the previous month. And in South Africa, the Deputy Central Bank Governor says the ability to maintain its investment grade credit rating is key to stabilizing inflation expectations. Our South African Reserve Bank has hiked the key benchmark rate, now standing at 7% by a cumulative 200 basis points since January 2014 in a bid to bring inflation within its target band of between 3 and 6% despite slow growth. Well, South Africa dodged ratings downgrades from Moody's, S&P, Global Ratings and Fitch, but the agencies warned that weak growth remained a risk before further reviews due by December. And care and growth picked up in the first quarter of 2016, helped by improved performance across the economy and especially tourism. The Kenya National Bureau of Statistics said in a statement, the economy expanded by 5.9% in the first three months of this year from 5% in the same period last year. In 2015, the East Africa's biggest economy struggled with a number of challenges, including attacks blamed on Somalia's Al-Shabaab militant that scared away tourists and eroded foreign exchange earnings in the key sector. Finance Minister... And Africa's businessman Aliku Dangote plans to launch Nigeria's first private crude oil refinery by 2019 while almost doubling his cement production on the continent by adding plants in eight countries as he shrugs off a regional economic downturn. Now Dangote says the 12 billion US dollar refinery would have a capacity of 650,000 barrels a day cornering the market in Africa's most populous country. Until recently, Nigeria was Africa's biggest crude oil producer, but it imports 80% of its fuel because poor maintenance means its four refineries never reach full output. Its current daily consumption is 260,000 barrels. A slump in commodity prices has hammered Nigeria's economy, along with many others on the continent, and raised the cost of borrowing. But Dangote, whose business empire stretches from cement to flour and pasta, is pushing hard into oil and gas. This, you know, I'm a mechanical completion will be end of 2018, but we will start producing 2019. It was a huge capacity, very, very huge capacity, with petrochemicals, 1.3 million tons. Dangote says the plants, which will include a two billion U.S. dollar fertilizer unit, was being funded through loans export credit agencies, and its own equity. The refinery we funded from our own cash flow, but we just uh, got in uh, approval of $150 million by IFC. And uh, also Central Bank, uh, you know, I mean, through the intervention fund, we got about, uh, you know, $50 billion, uh, I mean, 50 billion Naira uh, of uh, local support 10 years money at about uh, 9%. The collapse in oil prices has hit Nigerian companies hard, with many unable to access dollars due to central bank foreign exchange restrictions imposed to prop up the Naira. Dangote says the 161 million US dollars bought during that period from the central bank merely reflected the size of his business and did not represent preferential treatment. Badly also affected like any other company. Actually, more than any other company, uh, because we knew that yes, the policies of the government was actually that yes, you know, uh, industries and co they will be you know supported. And we know that yes, there are different views of either to devalue or not to devalue. But because we realized that yes, there was consistent 
for assurance by government that yes, there won't be that uh, devaluation. We have to make sure that there are no shortages of the commodities that we are producing. Dangote Sugar Refinery in Nigeria has reduced capacity by 15% as a result of the dollar crisis. The gas, which is our main source of power, is priced in dollars. So if there is 40% devaluation, your price will go up by 40%. The operational uh, expenses, you know, our dozers, our mining equipment, our trucks for distribution, uh, our spare parts, every single aspect of the production will go up by that percentage of the dollar. And it's not only us, it's almost everybody. The businessman also has his eyes on listing on the London Stock Exchange within the next year or two. Well, now let's cross over to the interbank market for an exchange uh, market and see what today looks like there. Olaleko Ido, Forex trader at Weber Bank, joins me now. Good afternoon, Olaleko. Uh, good afternoon. Now, the Naira depreciated yesterday, though slightly. Is the market looking up today, the last trading day? Uh, actually, the FS market has been slightly active today. We expect them to actually come to the market to intervene. Um, there's still a lot of demand on MET in the market presently. For among banks, banks are quoting 282, 50 cover, and 282, 283 figure for now. So no. banks are waiting to, uh, to, to, to bank are waiting for CBN intervention presently. So the sentiment you have observed today, what exactly is driving it? Uh, actually, um, there are lots of uh, sentiment between in the market because uh, there are a lot of customers that actually want to actually purchase uh, spots from interbank markets. And uh, CBN, like a, uh, two weeks ago, CBN sold a couple of forward transactions to some customers. And there's a liberty for them to actually reject those, cost, uh, those requests. So those customers that actually rejected those forward are coming to uh, an FX spot market to actually purchase uh, funds to settle their obligation uh, in all banks. So, so that's what actually caused the, the sentiment around the market today for FS markets. Now, what closing figure are we going to see by the time the market closes? That's um, in a few minutes' time, 2 p.m. precisely. Yeah, market will close in the next uh, probably five minutes. Uh, we expect market to actually close at um, 1272.50 cover. At the end of the day, market should close at 282.50 cover there about at the interbank market. And looking into next week, what is your outlook? Uh, next week, uh, the outlook is, uh, is very bright compared to this week because uh, as the, 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 the Asian grid risk, uh, the uncertainty surrounding the Asian grid risk have been minim minimized by CBN by sending, by hoping the push on market. So we expect some foreign investors to leave the market next week. So to provide more liquidity into the system and to provide more than dollars for banks to actually meet their customer obligation. So for next week, markets should be a little bit more liquid. We expect more from, from CBN and as well from foreign investors too. All right. Thank you very much, um, Olaliko, for your time. Olaliko, you do Forex Trader at um, Wema Bank. Well, we'll take a quick break now. When we return, we'll look at what's happening at a fixed income market. Do stay with us. <laughs>